the teleological or fine-tuning argument is a powerful argument for the existence of God. We've already presented the argument in another video, but a brief summary of that argument says that when we look at the universe, we see that several fundamental constants need to have extremely precise values for the universe to exist as it is and support life. If one of these fundamental constants was off by the slightest variation, the universe would be drastically different and unable to support life. So the universe needs to exist exactly as it is, or else we could not exist. So because of this, it seems pretty clear the universe was finely tuned by a designer. The only other possibilities as to why the universe is so finely tuned is physical necessity or chance. Now we know it is not because of physical necessity, meaning they are determined by the laws of nature, because there is no connection between the laws of nature and the finely tuned constants of the universe. The physicist Paul Davies notes that there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever the universe had to have the set of physical constants it does. But also, if the universe was finely tuned due to physical necessity, this would mean that a life prohibiting universe is impossible. But a life prohibiting universe is entirely probable and logically coherent. Skeptics would need to demonstrate that a life prohibiting universe is incompatible with the laws of physics. But this just isn't the case, and leading physicists accept this. Which is why the idea that the universe is finely tuned due to physical necessity has very few if any supporters. So this means the universe has either been finely tuned by design, or it's just a lucky chance. So in order to avoid the design hypothesis, many skeptics will argue that we are here by chance and say the weak anthropic principle is an explanation. Which is simply an argument that if the laws were not finely tuned for a life permitting universe, we would not be here to observe it in the first place. Basically, skeptics are sort of resorting to a nonchalant shrugging of the shoulders and saying, because we exist, the laws of nature must clearly be compatible with life. So the odds that we find ourselves in a life permitting universe is one in one. However, the philosopher John Leslie responds to this with an analogy. He says, imagine you're facing a firing squad. You hear the command to fire and then the sound of gunshots and then silence. You are not dead and all the highly trained marksmen missed. Leslie argues taking this stance is analogous to surviving a firing squad and saying, of course all the shots miss me, otherwise I wouldn't be here to notice that I'm still alive. A much more logical approach would be to find an explanation as to why such an unlikely event occurred. But according to this explanation by skeptics, you should not be surprised by the high improbability of the fine tuning of the universe because you are alive to observe it. However, it'd be clear this would not be our reaction if a similar thing happened like that of the firing squad analogy. We'd want to seek out an explanation as to why. Whereas the argument that the weak anthropic principle is an explanation, does nothing to offer any kind of resolution. Which is why cosmologists have come out in agreement with John Leslie. Martin Rees says in his paper, One hard-headed response is that we couldn't exist if the laws had boring consequences. We manifestly are here, so there is nothing to be surprised about. I'm afraid this leaves me unsatisfied. I'm impressed by a well-known analogy given by the philosopher John Leslie. Even Richard Dawkins has changed his view and now agrees with John Leslie. I agree with those who don't find that totally, totally uh, satisfying. Um, the philosopher John Leslie expresses his dissatisfaction with it by, um, I I by imagining a man facing a firing squad and um, there are ten men in the firing squad, they all aim their rifles at him, the rifles will go off and he finds himself still alive. And so he says to himself, well, obviously I, I, the, 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 the rifles all missed because otherwise I wouldn't be here. But that leaves unexplained why the rifles all missed. You still feel you need an explanation. He goes on to argue the multiverse is the reason the universe is so finely tuned. But as we have already shown in our previous video, that idea is unreasonable and violates Occam's razor. So arguing the weak anthropic principle as an explanation is an overwhelmingly rejected response to the teleological argument. However, despite this, many skeptics still argue like this without even realizing it. A common objection layman skeptics use is to say that high improbabilities happen on a daily basis, so the fine tuning of the universe should not be considered unlikely. They often use examples like, what are the odds you would pick any random sequence of cards out of a deck? For example, the odds you would pick out these four cards is one in over seven million. So astronomically improbable things happen all the time. So this is pretty much like the traditional way to argue, in that it is a nonchalant shrugging of the shoulders and saying, well, high improbabilities happen all the time, therefore we should not be surprised by the high improbability of the finely tuned constants. However, this is simply a mischaracterization of the argument. The fine-tuning argument doesn't simply argue high improbability, 
It argues high improbability with what results from it. When you take a random order of cards out of a deck, nothing happens. There is no special potentiality that makes a difference. There is no complexity, no order, no creation of atoms, no creation of massive stars or galaxies. There is nothing incredibly odd that needs explained. Taking random high improbabilities that produce nothing meaningful seems odd to compare to the fine-tuning argument, as they are completely different based on context of what is happening. On one hand, a massive universe containing billions of galaxies is formed, which is filled with integrative complexity and utter beauty, and on the other hand, cards get laid out that mean nothing and have no potentiality. But furthermore, these counter-arguments against the teleological argument still fail to explain why the universe is so finely tuned and expect us to sit around in ignorance and not seek out the most rational inference as to why the universe is so finely tuned. This is like surviving an execution by firing squad and saying, well, you know, high improbabilities happen all the time, so the odds that I'm still alive really don't need explained. A good logical explanation satisfies curiosity, whereas this kind of explanation doesn't offer anything and seems it is trying to avoid the conclusion. Finally, many skeptics argue that since we have no universes to compare our own against, we cannot say if the universe was finely tuned or not. We would need to evaluate the constants of other universes to see how improbable ours really is. Therefore, we cannot say our universe is finely tuned because we lack others to compare it with. Well, this objection is simply arguing that an absence of evidence somehow refutes the evidence that we do have and what we currently know which is that the universe does not have to have the physical constants because of physical necessity. Robin Collins points out that the naturalistic perspective would not predict a uniform distribution of values of constants. So other possible universes with slightly different constants are entirely probable, and the leading physicists agree with this. Plus, the physicist Paul Davies notes that there is no good reason to think there could have been minor variations to our universe and still exist as is. So there is also no evidence to suggest other universes could exist with slightly different constants and still support life. Arguing this way is like surviving an execution by firing squad and saying, well we really don't know how improbable this event is since we cannot observe my execution in a parallel world. So all the evidence we do have concludes our universe is unlikely and requires an extreme amount of fine tuning. Arguing we need a probability distribution is simply a way to try and brush over the evidence we do have. There is no good evidence to think our universe doesn't require extreme fine-tuning. So when these arguments are looked at more closely, we can easily see that it doesn't explain anything or even offer a rational conclusion. They merely try to get us to not find an answer for the high improbability of our universe existing and the extreme fine-tuning it required. Any rational person will find these arguments pointless and will actually seek out the most rational inference as to why the universe is so finely tuned. Hiding behind the weak anthropic principle is merely an attempt to hide from the most obvious conclusion.